I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my majesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth. Examine well your blood. Whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I to be in shady cloister mewed, chanting faint hymns at the cold fruitless moon, to be a barren sister all your life. Thrice blessed they that masters sow their blood, to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthlier happy is the rose distilled than that which grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Or I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or upon Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Oh no, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses that do fade so fast? If true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an addict in destiny. Then let us teach a child patience, because it is a customary cross as due to love, as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears or fancies followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a daughter of great brethren, and she has no child. From her house, from Athens is a house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lettest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. <coughs> Godspeed, fair Helena, with our men. Call you me fair, that fair again and easy. Demetrius loves your fair, oh happy fair. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. It's folly, Helena, it's no fault of mine. None, but your beauty. But that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold, her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the blade of grass. A time that lover's flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. There my Lysander and myself shall meet, and since from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Hermia. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee by Demetrius. Keep our Lysander. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius does on you. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she. What of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He would not know what all, but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile holding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is winged Cupid painted blind, nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste wings, and no eyes bigger on heady haste. 
And therefore, is love said to be a child because in choice he is so oft beguiled? Swackish boys in game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For er, uh, Demetrius looked on Hermes' eyes, he hailed on oaths that he was only mine. And as this hail, some hate from Hermes felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I, I, I will go tell him of Hermes' flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here I mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Spirit, we do wonder you. Over hill, over dell, sir bush, sir briar. Over park, over pell, sir flag, sir fire. I do wonder everywhere, swifter than a musifer. And I served the fairy queen to drew her orbs upon a grain. I must go seek some dew drops here and hang a pearl in every cosip's ear. Farewell, the love of spirits. I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves come here anon. The king that keep his revels here tonight? Take heed, the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell and wrath, and now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square, that all their elves for fear creep into Akon cups and Hide them there. Either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and navish sprite, called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he? Those that have goblin called you and sweet puck. You do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speaks aright. I am the merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. <laughs> but, room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here, my mistress, would that he were gone. You met by moonlight, Frau Titania. What? Tell us, Oberon. Fairies, Skippens, I have forsworn his bed and company. Fairy, rush one time. I'm not by thy lord. Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairy lunch in the shape of Corrie such all day, playing on pipes of corn and first in love to amorous Philida. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Knowing I know thy love to Theseus. It's got the forgeries of jealousy. And never, 
since the middle summer spring, met we on hill in Dale Forest or Mead by Paved Fountain or by Rushy Brook, or in the Bridget Martin took the sea to dance the ringlets to the whistling wind, but with thy brows that has disturbed our sport. Do you amend it? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross your room? How long within this wooden trend you stay? A chance to after this is this wedding day. If you will patiently dancing around and see our moonlight rebels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your hunt. Fairies, away! Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this group till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, Cubit or armed, a certain aim he took at a fair vestal thrown by the west, and lost his love shaft smartly from his bow, as he should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Yet marked I with a boat of Cubit fell, it fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound. Fetch me that flower, the herb I show thee once, the juice of it from sleeping eyelids late will make all man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that he sees. Fetch me this herb and be thou here again. I'll put the girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I watch Titania when she's asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. <laughs> the true comes here. I'm invisible. And I'll overhear their compliments. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou told'st me they were stolen unto this wood, and here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I cannot, nor I do not love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? Oh no, tell not too much of the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you impede your modesty too much? To leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not? What am I counting? To trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place? But the worth of a virginity? Your virtue is my privilege. For that it is not night when I do see your face, therefore I think I'm not in the night. Nor doth this wood lacks world of company for you, in my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? Oh, they can't sit there to look at me. Stay away from me. I'll run from thee and hide me in the bricks, and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, Nymph, while he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall save thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. <laughs> I pray thee, show me. I know a bank where the wine time blows, where ox lips and a nodding violet grows, there sleeps Titania sometime of the night. 
And with the juice of this, you will streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garment he has on. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. <laughs> Come, now a rondel and a fairy song. Sing me now sleep, then to your offices and let me rest. You spotted snakes with stubble Sentinel. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take, love and languish for his sake. Be it ounce or cattle bear, paddle for with bristle hair. In thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest, it is thy dear. So wake when some vile thing is near. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I have forgot our way. Well, rest us, Helmia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find your other place. For I upon this bank will rest my head. Uh, one self shall serve as pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one troth. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. Oh, take the sense sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean, that my heart onto yours is knit. So that but one heart we can make of it. Then by your side no bed will be to die, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Lysander riddles very prettily. Now much bitter my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But gentle friend for love and courtesy, lie further off. And good night, sweet friend, thy love ne'er alter to thy sweet life end. Amen. Amen. To that fair prayer say I, and then end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep gives thee all his rest. Who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despise the Athenian maid. Here's the maiden. Sleeping sound. On a dark and dirty ground. Churl upon thy eye I throw. 
Oh, the power this charm doth owe! When thou wakest, let love forbid. Sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone. For well, I must now to Oberon! Stay, do thou kill me, St. Demetrius! <clears throat> I charge thee, hands, and do not haunt me thus! Oh, I am out of breath in this bond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Oh, but who is here? Lysander? On the ground? If you live, good sir, awake. Then run through fire, I will, for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows. Ah, oh, that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where's Demetrius? Ah, oh, fitter word. Is that vile name to perish on my sword? Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love your Hermia, lord, lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change her even for a dove? Wherefore was I to this key mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Is it not enough? Is it not enough, young man, that I did never, no, never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye, but you must flout my insufficiency? Oh, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. Oh, the lady, a woman refused, should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there. And never mayest thou come like Sander near. Help me, Lysander. Help me, do thy best to pluck this crowing serpent from my breast. Lysander? What? Removed? Lysander? Lord? Either death or you. I'll find immediately. the stage and all the men and women were merely players they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts <laughs> his acts being seven ages at first the infant mewling and puking in the nurse's arms To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortunes, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing, end them. What hemp and homespun have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen. Hey. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my ass, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, <laughs> having come from a daybed where I have Olivia on the top. I'll follow you. I'll lead you about the round. Through bush, through bog, through brake, through briar. Sometimes the horse will be, sometimes the hound, a hog, a headless bear! Sometimes a fire. 
and may I work and ground and roar and burn at every turn. I say his knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to fright me, if he could. But I will not stir from this place. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that he shall hear I'm not afraid. Five, six, seven, eight. The ooze all cock so black of hue with orange tawny bill. The throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill, the finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo gray, whose note full many a man doth mark and does not answer nay. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so it's mine eye and throat to thy shape. And thy fair virtues false for false doth move me, all the first beauty say, to swear, I love thee. Oh. <clears throat> um, Methinks, mistress, you should have a little reason for that. And yet, say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The more the pity some honest neighbors will not make them friends. Nay, I can gleek upon occasion. Thou art as wise as that, beautiful. Uh, not so, neither. If I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I had enough to serve my own turn. Out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here without thou wit or no. And I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee. I wonder if Titania be awake, then what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, Matt Spirit? What Naru now of all this haunted growth? My mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her clothes and consecrated power, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour. An actor practicing the strangest play intended for great Theseus' nuptial day, forsook his scene and entered in break. When I did him a disadvantage take, <laughs> and as is no, I fix it on his head. <laughs> and when in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straightway loved an ass. This falls out better than I could advise. But as thou yet latch the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did with thee do. I took him sleeping, that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of force she must be eyed. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. Um, this is the woman, but not this the man. <laughs> Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I but try, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being our shoes and blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. So should the murder look, and so should I. Pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Good Demetrius, what thou giving me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out dog, out car! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? 
henceforth be never numbered among men. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of last sinners. Death, nor is he dead for all that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get that for? A privilege never to see me more. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain, which to some slight measure will pay. If for his tender here I make some stay. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the log juice on some true lot's side. With thy misprison must perforce ensue some true love turned, and not a false turn true. Then, fate or ruth? One man holding shrub, a million fail, confounding us the off. The bow the wood goes swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. By some illusion, see thou bring her here, I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go! Swifter than the arrow from the Titan's bow! Captain of a fairy band, Helena is here at hand. And the youth, mistook by me, pleading for the lover's fee. Shall we therefore in pageant see? Lord, what fool these mortals be! <laughs> and aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once woo one? That must need be sport alone! And those things shall best please me! That before preposterously! Why should you think that I should wound scorn? Scorn and derision have come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. And vows so born, in their nativity, all truth appears. You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh, devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. Oh, you give her or. I had no judgment when to her, I swore. You're not in my mind, now you give her oar. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, goddess, Nick, perfect divine. Tell me, my love, to what shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, let me kiss this princess of pure whites, this seal of bliss. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and you courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me, as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. For you love Hermia. This you know, I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love, and will do to my death. Never did Marcus waste more idle breath. Listen, there, keep thy Hermia. I will none. If you have loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her but is guessed why sojourned. And now to Helen. Is it home return and there to remain? Helen! It is not so. But why and kindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay? Whom love doth press to go? Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, oh, she is one of this confederacy. 
Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Andreas, Hermia, most ungrateful maid, as all the counsels that we do have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours we have spent, when we chid the hasty foot at time for parting us, was it all quite forgot? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems that you scorn me. Have you not said, Lysander, as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face, and made your other love Demetrius to call me <laughs> goddess nymph divine and rare precious celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? I understand not what you mean by this. I persevere counterfeit sad looks, make mouse upon me when I turn my back. But very well, tis partly my own fault. Which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, Chance I hope. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. Thy threats have no more strength than her, we prayers. I love thee. By my life I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee. To prove him false, that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw. Too. Quick! Come! Lysander, where detends all this? Away! You idiot! Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would have had your bond. For I perceive a weak bond holds you. May I not trust your word? What? Shall I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her. I'll not harm myself. What can you do me greater harm than hate? I'm not a Hermia, or not your Lysander. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me, why then you left me? Ah. Oh, the gods forbid. In earnest shall I say. Aye, by my life. I never did desire to see thee more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee. And love Helena. Oh me. You juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of lot. What, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, faith. <laughs> have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? You counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet. Why so? I that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between his statues. She has urged her height, and are you going so high in this esteem because I'm so dwarfish and so low? How low am I? I am not yet so low but that my nails can be down to thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower, hawk again. Do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you? Save that. I told Demetrius of your stealth unto this wood. He followed you, and for love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence and threatened me. And now, to Athens will I bear my folly back, and follow you no further. Let me go. Why get you gone? Who is that hindered you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. Oh, my Lysander! But Demetrius! Be not afraid, huh? She shall not harm thee. No, she shall not, though you take her part. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try who's right. Of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee cheek by jowl. You, mistress, all this quite as long as you. I go not back. I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence, still thou mistakest, or else comest thy neighbor's woeful. Believe me, King of Shadow, I mistook. Um, did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment be had on? And so far am I glad it sold it so as this, uh, their jangling, I esteem a sport. <laughs> thou seest his lovers seek a place to fight. Hi there, for Robin, overcast and I, and leave these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. To over their rolls, dress contrafeet and sleep, with leading legs and battery wings doors creep, and crush 
and nerve into Lysandra's eye, whose liquor has this virtuous property to take from thence all error with this might, and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. <laughs> I know Mahud here. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. I'll find Demetrius and revenge this respite. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? Nay, thou mockst me. Thou shalt buy this dear, if ever at thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way. Fain is constrained me to measure up my length on this coat there. Weary night, a long and tedious night. Abate thy hour, shy comforts from the east, that I may back to Athens by daylight. Steal me a while in my own company. Let Patti come one more. Two of both kind may cut four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a nevish rat. Best to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so in woe. I can no further go, no further go. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven's shield lies under if they meet in a fray. break. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks Yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. See how she leans her hand upon that cheek. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Um, sit you down upon this flowery bed while I thy amiable cheeks to coy and stick musk roses in thy slick smooth head and kiss thy fair large hands, my gentle joy. Watch, with that hear some music, my sweet love. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly, a pack of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. 
I have a dangerous fairy that shall sink the squirrel's hole and fetch the new nuts. I had rather have a handful or two of dried peas. But I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep now, and I may wind thee in my arms. So that the wood bind the sweet honeysuckle gently and twist. The female ivy so and rings the barky fingers of the elm. See style this sweet side. The doubt is not I do begin to pity. And gentle park, take this transformed skull from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he awaking with the other Jew, may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accident, but as the fear vexation of a dream. The first I release the fairy queen. Now, the Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. Wanderon, what creatures have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How came this thing to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do love his position now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head, Titania. Musical, and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five the scents. Musical, music such as charmed sleep. Sound, music, come, my queen, and thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus or in jollity. What nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep, and this Lysander. This Demetrius is, this Helena, old Nether's Helena. I wonder of their being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May, and hearing our intent, came to grace in our solemnity. But Aegeus, speak. Is this not the day that Hermia must give the answer for her choice? It is, my lord. Then go, bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world, that hatred is so far from jealousy, to sleep by hate and not fear enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half sleep, half waking, but as yet I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. I came with Hermia. Yeah. Our intent was to be gone from Athens where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, and for this their purpose hither to this wood. And I in fury hither followed them, fair Helen in fancy following me. But. My good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is. 
my object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse, we will have no more. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple by and by with us, these couples shall be eternally knit. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep with dream. Do you not think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. I pray thee, let us follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. this most fair pyramus. I've had the most rare vision. I've had a dream. Past the wit of a man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass. <laughs> if we go about to expound this dream. Oh, I will get Peter Gwynne to write a ballad for this dream. And it shall be called Bottom's Dream. Eh? Get it? Because it has no bottom. Throw the house, give gathering light, with a dead and drowsy fire, every elf and fairy sprite, harp as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. First, rehearse your song by rote, to each word a wobbly note. Hand in hand with fairy grace, will we sing and bless this place. Now, until the break of day, through this house is very Shall be fortunate, so, so shall all the couples three ever true in love and love. Every fairy take his gate, any several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace. If we shadows have offended, think of this, and all is mended. You have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And I. As an honest pack, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue. 
we will make amends along, else the park a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hand if we be friend, and Robin shall restore amends. <laughs> <laughs>